Mr. Appen here. Here's a short video on special relativity, relative velocity. So as simultaneity has shown us, the laws of physics may hold true in all inertial reference frames, but it is possible to measure time, position, and velocity differently depending on the velocity of your own reference frame. So at relativistic velocities, you must incorporate time distortion and length contraction too. So below we have three observers. We have a pedestrian at rest in the rest frame. Uh, B, a pilot in an uh, aircraft moving, and C, a ship captain moving. And they will all measure velocities a little differently. So let us recall the Galilean and Lorentz transformation equations first, and we'll also add in the velocity transformations, which uh, you can derive or look up the derivations in a different video. So here we have our um, reference frame A, or in this case 1, or S, uh, reference frame B, or S prime, or 2, the moving frame. And uh, in the Galilean, um, your uh, x location in the moving frame is x in the rest location. Subtract the relative velocity times time. And your y and z's are the same, and your t is the same. And to get relative velocity, it's, um, it's just the velocity of the one reference frame subtract the other. Or, if you want to know the relative velocity of two with respect to one, so the rest person perhaps... Uh, measuring the the velocity of the other uh, of the uh, in the rest frame versus the moving frame it's just v2 subtract v1 now if you incorporate the gamma factors for Lorentz uh, it's a little bit different and for velocity it works out to be this v is equal to u subtract u prime uh, 1 subtract u u prime over c squared u is the uh, reference frame that you're measuring the motion from Okay. and v is the relative velocity, and u prime is the velocity of the other reference frame. And uh, I like to write it like this way, using twos and ones instead. So if you want to know the velocity of two relative to one, according to the observer in reference frame one, it's v2 subtract v1 over one subtract v2 v1 over c squared. So we're going to do a couple examples. So for example, uh, let's say, let's do a non-relativistic one just to see how easy it is to do with Galilean, first of all. So here, uh, according to observer A, um, aircraft B is moving at 900 kilometers per hour east, and ship C is moving west at 500 kilometers per hour. And you want to know the relative velocity between um, of C compared to B. So to find that out, we're going to take uh, velocity 2, which is the negative 500, because uh, 500 west is negative 500 east. Subtract the 900 uh, kilometers per hour of the uh, observer in B. And observer B is going to say, hey, C is approaching me at 1400 kilometers per hour or minus 1400. So it's 1400 kilometers per hour west or coming from the east. Now let's try it relativistically. It's a little bit more difficult. So now the plane is moving at 90% the speed of light or 0.9 C and the ship is moving west at 0.5 C. So instead of using 900 and 500, I'm using 0.9 and 0.5, just to get similar kinds of numbers. So we're going to use the relativistic formula this time, and we're going to have negative 0.5c subtract positive 0.9c over 1 subtract negative 0.5c times 0.9c over c squared. And you'll see the c times the c over the c squared cancels out. 0.5 times 0.9 is 0.45, and a negative negative makes a positive. So we're going to get 1 plus 0.45 here. Now notice the top would be what the Galilean value would be. Galileo would say it was negative 1.4 times the speed of light. But we know the speed limit is the speed of light, uh, so that definitely that can't happen. So our relative velocity is going to be 0.966c moving west or approaching from the east. Now let's try another non-relativistic one. And this time uh, both sh ships will be moving in the same direction. So according to B, what is C doing? So B is moving 900 kilometers per hour to the east, and B is also moving at 500 kilometers per hour to the east. So V2 is doing 500, subtract 1, or uh, which is doing uh, 900. So there's going to be a difference of 400 kilometers per hour. So uh, object B is catching up to C at 400 kilometers per hour. If you're catching up, and if you're staring at the object in front of you, you'd say, hey, it's coming towards me at 400 kilometers per hour. It's a little difficult for a lot of people to get that perspective. 
Now let's try this relativistically. So if we plug in the same our values this time, 0.5 subtract 0.9 over 0.5 times 0.9, uh, we're going to get the negative 0.4, just like we would with Galileo, but now divided by 1 plus 0.45, and we get 0.28. So according to the um, observer in B, this ship here is approaching at 0.28C. Okay, so now a real tough one, a uh, reverse question. If a pilot moves at 900 kilometers per hour and sees a ship escaping at 200, then find the velocity according to observer A at rest. So here the relative velocity now is given instead, and we have to find the velocity of, uh, of the other object. So um, we got 200 equals 900, subtract V1. Uh, so V1, when we rearrange it, is going to be equal to 1100 kilometers per hour. So this uh, ship here is escaping at 1100 kilometers per hour. So I just know it's a typo, so I just fixed it. So uh, the relative velocity, 200. We're trying to find object C, or number 2 here. Subtract the, uh, um, the velocity of our main observer here, uh, and it's going to be 1100. So I fixed that. So if you download the notes, that'll be fine for you. Okay, so now let's try this with relativ relativity this time. So, um, we're going to have a relative velocity of 0.2c. So this ship is escaping at 0.2c according to b. But if you're in reference frame a, then what's the velocity of the ship? What would you say it is? It's not 0.2c. So um, you plug in the values, and it's just a little bit of manipulation here. So we're trying to isolate v2, but we got a v2 here, and we have a v2 here. What do we do? So this is actually not as hard as it looks. All we do is just remember that whatever's in the denominator technically is inside brackets. We're going to cross multiply that up to the top and multiply through by 0.2c. So when we do that, we're going to get 1 times 0.2c is 0.2c. Then we get v2 times 0.9c over c squared times the 0.2c. Now we're going to get a c and a c over c squared, so all c's cancel out nicely. And we get 0 0.2 times 0 0.9, which is 0 0.18. So we're going to get the 0.2c subtract 0.18v2 equals v2 minus the 0.9c. Now all we have to do is just collect like terms. And so when we bring the 0.18v2 over, we're going to have 1.18v2s. And eventually that'll go to the denominator. And when we have the 0.2c uh, and we bring the, net, the point negative 0.9 over, that's going to become 1.1c. So we get 1.1c over 1.18. And we end up getting an answer 0.93c. So according to observer A, this ship, or this plane is moving at 0.9c. This ship is moving at 0.93c. But they see a difference of 0.2c. All a little bit different, thanks to relativity. So, in summary, at relativistic velocities, the relative velocity must always be less than the speed of light. Even if the Galilean relative velocity is greater than or equal to 1c, the Lorentz transformation will decrease it below 1.0c. So the speed limit is the speed of light, and nothing can reach that except for light. So if you get something faster than the speed of light, you made a mistake. Now, strangely, some things actually do have relative velocity greater than the speed of light. Supposedly, the expansion of the universe is faster than the speed of light, which is odd. If you want to know more about that, click on this link right here, and you can find out more about it in Wikipedia.